Coming up on Mountain News this morning, officials are reminding everyone to stay safe on camping trips after a recent death at the Red River Gorge. And if you're planning on traveling for July 4th, you might want to prepare for traffic everywhere. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfi. We are just past 5.30 on Tuesday, July 2nd. Now let's go on ahead and send it over to meteorologist Tim Drawbridge for a look at your forecast this morning. Good morning, Olivia. Good morning, everyone. Look off in the distance here. Some little clouds and fog have been developing over the last hour or so. Outside our studios here in the heart of Perry County, 54 cool. Refreshing, very pleasant, that's for sure. Visibility-wise at the reporting stations right now, everybody's at 10 miles, the max. So needless to say, we'll deal with a few areas of fog as we get into our Tuesday morning. Temperature-wise, oh, very pleasant. Near 70 at Harlan, but near 50 at Urban. Just depends on whether your clouds are, check that, your wind has completely diminished down the overnight period. And dew point-wise, this is outstanding for the 2nd of July, but these numbers will be going up as we head through the day. Just got some cloud cover issues toward the Cumberland Valley. Otherwise, we're mainly clear across the region besides some of the low clouds and fog that are trying to develop. And as we head through today, a lot of sunshine. The humidity slowly on the rise, so it's not a big shock to the system today as we get up to a high of 87. More about our chances for showers and storms for the 4th. The first alert seven day forecast coming up in a few moments. Olivia. All right, Tim, thank you. There was a deadly crash in Laurel County yesterday that closed a road down for several hours. It happened on US 25, about seven miles south of London. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office was called to the scene around 5 p.m. yesterday. Officials say a 2007 Honda motorcycle was carrying two people when the driver lost control. The driver was identified as Randy Schneck, a 54 year old man from Corbin. He was taken to London Hospital for serious injuries. The passenger Sherry Schneck, a 48 year old woman of Corbin, was pronounced dead at the hospital. We have an update and a death investigation. We now know the name of the camper who died over the weekend in the Red River Gorge. The Menifee County coroner identified him as Jared Harmon. The Wolf County search and rescue team says the Menifee County coroner found Harmon dead in his tent. His body was taken to Frankfurt for an autopsy. In light of the death, Drew Stevens with the search and rescue team says it is important to be prepared for a trip to the gorge. It's always important to know beforehand where you're going and to make a plan. And that information can also be very useful if there were an incident or emergency to occur. Not all trails magically lead back to your car, right? Know that route ahead of time and make a plan. And then maybe make alternative plans just in case that trailhead you plan to visit is overcrowded and you have to switch to a new place. And we will keep you updated as we learn more information in this investigation. An Indiana man has been arrested in Powell County in connection to a shooting that left a teen injured. According to Stanton Police, the shooting happened Monday morning at the intersection of Washington Street and Railroad Street. Two minors were shot at and one was hit in what police believe was a drug related incident. The teen was taken to UK hospital for treatment, but has since been released. Michael Wilson was arrested and taken to the Powell County Detention Center. In Claiborne County, Tennessee, a convicted felon is facing new charges after police say he pointed a gun in a man's face with his child nearby. Police say two people were putting a fence up when Jeffrey Wilson walked up and asked what they were doing. The victim says he told Wilson to leave and he got upset. He says Wilson started pointing a revolver at him. A witness was able to get the victim's son to safety. He now faces charges including aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. A New York man is facing charges after he was arrested in Pike County. It happened on June 22nd. 
Police received a complaint about a theft by deception attempt at a Walmart. Constantin Lakadis reportedly asked store workers to put money on a card while trying to give and take money from a clerk. Police say he did this so he could have more money than what he asked for. He was questioned after the transaction was not completed. He was taken to the Pike County Detention Center. Kentucky State Police Post 11 is asking for your help to locate a missing man from Rockcastle County. 36-year-old Joseph D. Miller has been missing since June 21st. They say Miller was last seen in the Greenfish area around Rockcastle County. If you have any information, you are asked to call KSP Post 11 at 606-878-6622. Folks throughout the country are still talking about last Thursday's presidential debate between former President Donald Trump and current President Joe Biden. Governor Andy Bashir was asked about the topic yesterday. He says while he thought the performance was not President Biden's best, the governor says he will still support him. Well, the debate performance uh, was rough. Uh, it was a very bad night uh, for the president, uh, but he is uh, still the candidate. Uh, only he can make decisions about his future candidacy. Uh, and so as long as he continues to be in the race, uh, I support him. Governor Bashir has also released the completed 2023 Kentucky Domestic Violence Data Report. When comparing with the previous year, there were more EPOs served by state police, totaling more than 17,000 in 2023. While the definition of domestic violence was narrowed last year, there were still more than 7,700 arrests for incidents involving domestic or dating violence and abuse. Officials say one in two women and one in three men have experienced domestic violence. Governor Bashir provided a statement saying, quote, it is heartbreaking how many Kentuckians are victims of domestic violence, said Governor Bashir, and that is why since one, day one in public office, I have been committed to working with partners to end this horrific crime, assist victims, reverse dangerous trends, and hold offenders accountable. My administration continues to wrap our arms around victims and their families, letting them know that we are and always will be here for them. We're hearing from a man who wrote a book about his son's incredible journey following a serious crash in 2015. Aaron Williams was just 16 when he crashed on his way to a homecoming dance. Doctors say he died that night before coming back to life. He spent 43 days in a coma, then several months in a wheelchair. Despite all that, Aaron has made an incredible recovery in the past nine years. He learned to walk again and is currently a student at Moorhead State. This book hurts my heart because it was written at the cost of my son. But people kept telling me, you need to write a book. So I did. The book From Life to Death, The Aaron Williams Story is now available on Amazon. The Floyd County School District is rolling out its newest effort to educate, bringing the classroom to the community. WYMT's Buddy Forbes explains. Floyd County is adding some fresh wheels to its fleet. Uh, this bus is a uh, set up like any elementary preschool cl uh, classroom that you would see out in the schools. Superintendent Anna Shepard says the county has nearly 2,000 kids ages 3 to 4, but only 16 classrooms to fit 300 of those students. Be able to serve the students that don't qualify for state preschool or the Federal Head Start program or for families who choose not to send their child to school until kindergarten. The preschool classroom on wheels is the district's effort to address the gap in education for children by meeting families where they are. They're not in Head Start and preschool, they're not in child care, so we can help bridge that gap of school readiness skills. Parking the preschool in central spaces to provide a classroom structure that includes art, play, housekeeping, dress up, science, math, arts, and language arts. You're going to have kids from various schools uh, meeting them at the park or meeting them in these locations uh, to learn more. And how exciting is that? Also working to show families what the school setting would be like, 
and what resources are available to them. So we're not only teaching the children, but we have the opportunity to teach parents as well. Pulling out all the stops. You know, we want to have them ready to learn, ready to grow, and ready to succeed when they walk through that kindergarten door. To drive the students toward education. In Floyd County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. The district is hosting its first three classroom on wheels stop this month, July 11th at Mini Ballpark, July 18th at Archer Park, and July 24th at the Eastern Library. Kentucky's new education commissioner is officially on the job. Yesterday marked Dr. Robbie Fletcher's first day in the role. He has spent the last decade as a superintendent of Lawrence County Schools and is from Martin County. Fletcher was approved by the state Senate earlier this year to take over the role. Whether you're going to or coming back from a party, stopping by your local parade, heading out of town, or just doing day-to-day -day errands, holiday weekends are always busy with travelers. Mackenzie Davis is Administrative Support Specialist with Richmond Police. She says more cars on the road, distracted drivers should be something everyone is looking out for. Davis says shares how to drive and watch fireworks safely. If you do need to pull over and watch something, make sure you're in a safe location. Use the shoulders, try to pull off into a parking lot somewhere, gas station, any of those options where you all can step out of the car and watch safely from a distance. AAA expects more than 70 million people to drive or fly this week. TSA already broke records for the number of people at checkpoints. And we want to remind you that the annual WIMT Summer Blood Drive is fast approaching. The blood drive will be tomorrow from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. The Kentucky Blood Center Blood Mobile will set up outside our station at 199 Black Gold Boulevard. All of those who donate will receive a Kentucky Blood Center t-shirt while supplies last. And when we return, one of the world's biggest bands invited an iconic star to perform on stage with them. In the meantime, a spectacular start to the day. The question is, does it finish just as nice? We'll let you know. The First Alert 7-day forecast is coming up as your WIMT Mountain Morning News continues.